Our show. Um, our A segment, I'm about all about uh, Niham and how the election ran in the last election. After the 2015 election, after the general election, about Niham economy. Niham, our shopche boro regeneration hai kaise? Shara England mein toh shopche boro regeneration Niham hai hui se through the Olympics and there's a lot of other um, uh, regenerations happening and a lot of opportunities happening. And uh, I think a lot of people are going to be filthy rich in the next uh, five to ten years, and we will talk about that. Before I uh, introduce, uh, go into the main debate, uh, I just wanted to remind you that our today's our, our quiz is about Niham, and um, the quiz is is Niham Council an inner or an outer borough council? The possible answers are A, inner borough, B, outer borough. Do write in your uh, answers over the email to us. The email address is on the scroll. It's pnb at channelai.tv. Uh, uh, Umes, <coughs> the last election, how, d how did it go for you guys? I mean, obviously it went well because you, you're all labor in, in, the, in the whole, whole, all 60 of you are labor, <laughs> including uh, Robin Welsh is 61, isn't it? 61 percent, indeed, so on a higher turnout as well. All of them are, are, are so what, what is it you're, you're, you're doing so well that you, you are maintaining uh, the labor, the labor uh, the council? Well, firstly, you never take people for granted, and you can never be complacent in politics. Uh, because the day you start becoming complacent uh, and start taking people for granted, that's the day you start losing elections. You've got to work hard to earn the trust of people. Yes, we've been 100% Labour Council for quite some years now, mm -hmm. but we take each election seriously. We go forward to the people of Newham, as we did last time, and said, look, we've delivered on our promises, and more importantly, these are the promises we're going to make for the next four years. Mm. We are not going to increase the council tax for the next two years. Uh, and we are going to build so many homes. Uh, we're going to have an enforcement officer in each ward. We made very specific promises, very specific pledges, yeah. unlike uh, our opposition, who's uh, if I may say so, uh, the you know, manifesto uh, promises, if you can use that word, was to attack the council on everything without uh, the Labour Party without offering any solutions. And I think people, no matter who they are, what race, religion, mm. people are not stupid. They judge politicians on their record, and more importantly, what politicians are going to promise and deliver for their children and for their families. And I think we earn the trust of people. Uh, and on that basis, um, uh, they've given us a mandate for another four years, which we shall not squander, because we've got to fight another election in 2018. The people, as my mayor, Sir Robin Wells said, are our masters. They are the real bosses. Sure. We are their servants. Sure. The, the, I mean, for you, you might think that, um, you know, that the opposition is just pandering and saying all, all these things on their leaflets. But on another note, it, it might sound like they are pulling in the stories that, a Labour Council wouldn't say. And they are pushing out that, look, they are doing it. Because you don't have any opposition in your council. So th a credible opposition would bring out the truth of, of the council. You know what I mean? And um, maybe they were trying to be that you know, opposition, the credible opposition. I think you got the right word when you said credible opposition. There's opposition and credible opposition. And of course, we welcome opposition. This is a democracy. Yes. Uh, and and you know, there should be alternatives. But alternatives based on facts, uh, on, 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 on a, an analysis of the local situation, the local economy, the local society, and solutions. So just to say, the new council uh, you know, favors batting shops. Of course, we don't favor the uh, growth in batting shops. Uh, we actually you know, re reject applications, but there's a national planning framework within yeah. which betting shops are, are, are discussed and agreed upon. Uh, the betting companies are very powerful corporations. Yes. They go and appeal. Uh, but to just say the Newham Council uh, uh, is in favor of betting shops uh, is, is, is nonsense. I'm just using one example of cheap uh, propaganda. Sure. Uh, whereas we could actually point to activity. Alcohol-related crime in Newham has fallen considerably um, uh, because of 
enforcement activity, we've got a very proactive licensing committee. I know, because I sit on it. Sure. Uh, and you minute, are the lead yeah, member for The minute anyway, there's yeah. any trouble in any licensed establishment, uh, we, we, we have them straight in before our committee, sure. which is why alcohol-related crime has fallen considerably. Council tax has now been frozen for the last uh, six, seven years. We're going to come into the economy in a bit, but uh, Najibai, you're, you're a resident in Tower Hamlets. Um, and you've seen, you've seen, sorry, 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 and you, you work in Tower Hamlet, so you, you, you represent us in the Very courts. Very much a resident of New York. You represent <laughs> us in the courts uh, uh, in, 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 in Tower Hamlet. But in Neham, being a resident, you know, you've seen the election. Do you think that uh, the, the things that, I mean, not only conservatives, but Lib Dem was there and other parties were there, and Labour still maintained uh, their 60 plus seats, including uh, Robin Wells' uh, mayor, ship. But do you not think that a credible opposition is needed in, in a council to keep the main group on their toe? And for the, the, the conservatives, they were saying that, you know, the, the, the council tax needs to be looked at, the housing needs to be looked at. And uh, at a certain extent, I think they were talking about the markers, that the markers needs to be looked at. Um, uh, on the planning permission. So do you not think those are v valid issues? Well, first of all, before coming to your question, I mean, I uh, live in Newham and work in Tower Hamlet. Yeah. So if I divide I the time, <laughs> I'll do 24 hours. Yeah. Then probably 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> um, as um, Councillor Umesh Deshai, whom I called uh, Umesh Bhai, I have seen him uh, quite a few uh, years. Very passionate politician, very dedicated individual. He explained I mean, election atmosphere. And I was there, I, I noticed there was a fight of ideologies and mm -hmm. policies among uh, Labour and other opposition parties. It is not for the Labour Party to have credible uh, opposition into place. It is for the public. Public voted, and probably uh, public were quite satisfied on Labour policies, and that's why they voted overwhelmingly. Mm -hmm. So they, they didn't do, they had nothing to do with, you know, who will come into uh, opposition and how credible or powerful opposition would be. Sure. So it is for the public. So public, if they're satisfied, then of course you have to take it for granted. <laughs> let, me, let me be a devil's advocate. And let's say um, they're all laborers in the council now, and you're a resident, and they're just telling everybody that everything's running fine, everything's honkadori, everything's perfectly okay but behind the scene it may not be. So how do you keep that governance? Well, that is a hypothetical I mean, question. I mean, I'm going to ask this question to both of you, mm. that Ed Miliband, uh, just few, uh, I think in the last question mm. session, he said that he wants uh, a people's question time mm. for, for, the, for the prime minister. I mean, looking at a council like Newham, where they have only labor councillors and the labor mayor, do you think that's, something, uh, a model that you can use? Would you be interested to participate well, in that kind of Well, it would have been better if the there was, uh, I mean, uh, for the sake of uh, fairness, it would have been better if there was a balance or strong opposition. Then probably Labour would have, you know, uh, be more accountable and uh, to the uh, public through opposition. But again, uh, democracy, this is a developed democracy here. So it's <coughs> not a way just by passing everything and then uh, going through a back door. There are opportunities for public to ask questions, to see their counsellor, to um, go for uh, redress procedures, to ask questions. So uh, personally, I would feel I would prefer to leave on the public how they would uh, like their uh, local authority to be run. Sure. If they're happy on that, I'm happy with that. Okay. What do you think about Ed Miliband saying, bringing the you know, uh, residents into into the parliament. So the, would you uh, encourage that to coming into, into your council? Well, well I think any a session? A anything that increases political transparency mm -hmm. uh, and people's participation in politics uh, and interest is to be welcomed. But I'll tell you how you untrust. You untrust and restore credibility in politics by keeping your promises and t doing things that you told people you're going to do uh, uh, when you stand for elections. Because one thing that people get disillusioned about is when politicians say something and do something else. Or that, like when we had the expenses scandal yeah. at parliamentary level, I may add, uh, 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 from all parties yeah. as well, to be fair. I uh, don't want to make a party political point out of this. But look, coming to Neom, because I'm a politician in Neom, we do surgeries. All of councillors expect to do surgeries. Yeah. So 
there is that first level of contact. I do surgeries every week, along with my uh, two other two colleagues in East Tom Central Ward, sure. East Tom Town Hall from 6 yeah. p.m. to 7 p.m. The mayor of Newham does uh, surgeries every, you know, on a regular basis, telephone yeah. surgeries, face-to-face -face contacts. Um, he's accessible, to, uh, you know, uh, depending on his diary. Uh, he goes to public meetings. Uh, our cabinet meetings are held, uh, uh, unless it's fi how, sensitive how, financial how, information, how are held openly at a convenient time in the evening yeah. for members of the public uh, uh, to attend. So we have various levels of transparency. And don't forget, there are also inspections of our services by 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 center by you know sure, sure. Center the, the, yeah, So yeah. we are the, and, 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 the, others, and yeah. the biggest scrutinizer of Newham Council's yeah. policies and decisions. I think that's because are very much uh, we ourselves. In the these we days. ourselves, because it is yeah. not our money; it's the people's money, sure. and we are very conscious of that. And sure. I can give in endless examples sure. how we constantly monitor ourselves. Sure. That is you know, self scrutiny. Sure. On, we could on the election on the election side, because I want to come into the economic side of it. Um, Just one, one thing, I, mean, yeah. I think the um, uh, speaker has uh, said that I mean, they will consider the proposal put forward by Ed, Ed Miliband. Miliband. And okay. I think that's a good idea. I think and by the time they do it, it will be next parliament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, uh, what I wish I told, I mean, uh, well, instead of uh, nasty politics or a uh, smear campaign or other things, I mean, uh, Conservative or Lib Dem or other parties, they could put forward with solid alternative to labor sure. and if they could, uh, could win uh, the minds sure. and um, options of the people public sure. then probably they can come with a yeah. solid strong before uh, I go into the economic side the last question on this on this the election side of it because it was a big buzz about the markers why is the council this is what we hear from from the outside that you're not giving the permission why is th why is that the case well, no, again, uh, let, I mean, there's a lot of propaganda, uh, propaganda out there. Sure. And uh, let a good story not be spoiled uh, if some people are to be believed. Uh, the facts are much more complicated. Uh, the Merkel's issue has been ongoing since the mid-1990s. Uh, to cut a long story short, permission was granted, uh, ag agreement was reached with them in early 2012. Okay. Uh, a few weeks later, uh, they changed their mind and came back with a different plan. Right. Uh, the position is it's not whether there should be a mo mosque or not. Of course, if there's a need for a mosque, then there should be one. The question is what type of mosque, what size. And also, that particular land is what we call mixed-use land. Right. So it's land uh, designated, along with a number of other sites, sure. which affects other communities and other faith groups as well. Sure. A, uh, a site is, which has been reserved for housing, we are in desperate need for housing sure. for all our communities, sure. Muslims, Hindus, Christians, yeah. black, white, brown, uh, and for employment. Uh, the Merkel's representatives have been very constructive in their discussions with Newham Council. Uh, I myself have met them on several occasions. Uh, I, I'm talking about the Merkel's sure. trustees themselves, not people who claim to sure. speak on behalf of the Merkel's, sure. because there are many people sure. who claim to speak on behalf of the sure. Merkel's, uh, and, and I think some of them are the problem. The situation is this. The GL, Newham Council, considered the plans, the revised if plans. Just give us bullet uh, points because Newham Council, we want to go into Newham, Newham Council uh, received a revised application in late 2012. Uh, the initial uh, proposals having been uh, changed by the Merkel's representatives themselves. The basis, you know, we had an uh, agreement on that. Uh, they then appealed, uh, uh, Boris Johnson GLA turned yeah. it down as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was an appeal done by, uh, in conducted by Inspector ago, yeah. in, back in June. Yeah. He is now working on his, uh, on, on his recommendations okay. and will go to the Secretary of State, Eric Pickles, okay. for his decision. Okay, okay then we'll, we'll watch how, how that pans out. Let's come to the economy of, of, uh, um, of Neum. I mean, the biggest regeneration in England has happened in mo most of the part of, of of um, yeah. Neum. I mean, um, I had the opportunity of looking at it closely during that time when the plannings were going through and things like that. And I have to say that you have managed to take most out of this, this opportunity and you took the most opportunity ever because the five boroughs, the inner five boroughs that meant to work, I think comparing to the other four boroughs, you took the stadium, the aquatic, and, and the most sort of thing. I mean, you had the land too at the same time, but I think you managed to do that. So that's very <coughs> good that you know, it, it's, it's, you've done well on that. But coming to the other regenerations, like the housing and things like that, the, at the moment we see on Advertise that those housings that you are building, they're not less than half a million, taking Royal Docks area and the other uh, Olympic sites, you know, Olympic village sites. There are 10,000 um, social housing, which is mm. spread between mm. the five boroughs, but the other bits are, are half a million pound. So are you actually catering for the poor people? Because you are the second most deprived borough in the country. 
Uh, good question. Firstly, we were always conscious that the Olympics did not begin and end at the end of August 2012. It yeah. was an Olympic legacy, which is about people yeah. and a long-term legacy. So we were always conscious about uh, maintaining that, uh, ensuring the Olympic legacy when we were first granted the Olympics back in 25. Uh, we had the Olympics, we had Westfields, uh, through Workplace, our own Jobs Bureau. We now uh, deliver jobs for 21,000 residents, real, solid, concrete achievements for local people. Uh, and we have evidence to show that these jobs actually are not just short-term jobs. Uh, there are numerous housing developments. We, uh, the, one, the developers you are talking to are done by developers who get planning permission from us. Yeah. We set various conditions. There is affordable it's housing. A, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. which all benefits local people. Uh, and there's also an element of affordable housing as well. Uh, and we are also working in partnership but with housing associations. Ratio, how much uh, would that would you say is social housing? Well, 10 percent, 15 percent? Well, the, 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 there are you know standard criteria laid down by the GLA, sure. and it depends also on developments. Are you achieving the 35 percent to 40 percent that you would wish to achieve? We, we strive to achieve it. But yeah. are you uh, achieving we, that? We strive to achieve it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in Niam, um being a resident, I don't know if you have any properties there, but this licensing for for landlords. I mean, I've talked about the poor, that uh, uh, they might not be able to get onto the housing ladder. But what about the, uh, the rich that are there already, that have like properties and renting out, but they're now affected by this licensing, um, the license, 500 pounds license for renting out? Five, okay, yeah. Uh, in terms of um, legal principle, I think it's a good idea. I mean, it's compliance from uh, landlords. But I would uh, say part. your council is trying to make money out of you. And yeah, well, if it is a, a political weapon to make or earn money or capitalize, then that's probably not a good idea. But for my personal view, I have quite a few properties in New Okay. And um, probably it is a good idea, at least council can monitor and uh, deal with rock uh, landlords who don't care about rules, regulation, or at least healthy environment in the properties. But that's uh, at least through the licensing procedure, council can control or monitor. Yeah. And that's a good, good, good initiative in my point of view. And uh, when you but say these money, pay, can go money up to be paid, because if you look at when when the f uh, student fee was introduced back in 2000, it's now that was 3000. It's only it's gone up to 9000. These things only go up. So, w is there is there a cap that you think, especially the well, pensioners? Well, well. This is directed against uh, homeowners who rent out uh, their homes. Uh, so what we are trying to do is regulate, uh, have some sort of control in the private sector rental market. Look, in 2014, we cannot tolerate the situation. I call them modern day Rachmanites, but landlords actually have sometimes 15, 20, <laughs> our record is 36 people living in one house with uh, one toilet, right. one bathroom. So we're bringing uh, uh, that white chapel it, scenario back in the <laughs> Back in the <laughs> 1800s, well, uh, well, uh, well uh, indeed, um, and uh, it is intolerable. Um, we are in support of good landlords. Sure. Uh, now, let's look at the economics of the scheme. When the scheme was first introduced, the, the license fee was 150 pounds over five years, yeah. which yeah. Uh, can be claimed back against yeah. tax. Now it's 500 pounds, but over five years. So it's not a money-making scheme. Uh, is that to actually get rid of the bad, uh, bad landlords? We now got 30,000 plus landlords who are licensed. Uh, we know exactly what condition their property is in. We've told them, advised them legally how many people can stay in that property. So it's an attempt to help people. It's somewhere towards solving the housing crisis. It's getting rid of bad landlords. Uh, 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 and then the ultimate sanction is withdrawing uh, their license. Right. But it, it's only a small minority of landlords who are bad, unscrupulous, exploitative, and we make no apologies for taking them on. We want people to invest in Neom, okay. but what we want is good housing for our tenants. We want landlords, of course, you know, people want to make money, uh, but you know, uh, uh, the question is how they treat their tenants. But is there, is there uh, any, any break or for, for like pensioners who can't, uh, they might have a void period? Uh, within their tenancy, they might have one month void or the license is over a period of years, okay. so five years. Okay, so yeah. there's no cap. But or break I would on say it. The, the, the fee is very reasonable, and, 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 it's, it's, it's and they can pay installmentally uh, too. Is it? Uh, no, it, it, it's, 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 one-off. Uh, it's a one-off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In in terms of your your regeneration, I mean, Tower Hamlets uh, after the city had has the Canary Wharf, which is the financial hub of of uh, second financial hub of Europe. You are now trying to be the IT hub in, in, in Europe, which is a very good thing. But would that not then 
drive away a lot of the local residents from your area into into other boroughs, into um, unaffordable. So people, if they can't afford it, they will have to move out. Uh, no, in fact, there are lessons to be learned from Canary Wharf and development of uh, area around Canary Wharf uh, in the early, uh, in the mid 1980s. I, in fact, used to live in the Isle of Dogs, sure. Westbury Road, okay. um, but there was no Canary Wharf there. Sure. And mistakes were made in those early days. It was an experiment. Local people were resentful that they weren't getting the jobs and housing from it. They saw people moving in who could afford to buy these houses. Yeah. That bred, you know, social tension. Led to social tensions. It led to the rise of the BN support for the BNP. Mm -hmm. I people who do not support fascism mm. but were disillusioned sure. we have everything that we do uh, we set up a company called red doors uh, right. uh, we're in the process of actually you know expand uh, venturing to the housing market to, 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 to actually uh, you know get um, to, uh, to improve the housing prospects for our residents and people moving into new York yeah. all the various I think developments there's going to be a lot of jobs anyway uh, indeed. So I mean the yeah. Chinese Asian business board yeah. which is next to the land next to New York Council's offices in Dockside up to 20,000 jobs are going to be created there but is that only for formed. five years or ten years, or is that no, no, going to be the, constant? The, uh, the, that's, that's a permanent that. Okay, that's good. It's, 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 okay. you know, it's an Asian business board with a Chinese-owned uh, company. Sure. This is your first venture uh, uh, you know, in I this have country. To mention, I have to mention this, that you know, Newham has been there for the creation of Newham and Tar Hamlets since 1963 onwards. But in, back in the 80s, do you not agree that if Hasseltine did not give the permission to open up the brownfield in, in Docklands. We now have Canary Wharf. And now, another Tory government is opening up Royal Docks and making other opportunities for, for Newham. And, you know, so do you, do you, would you agree that, that the current government, when they come along, they bring out the economical development of the, of the areas? Well, well Michael Hazleton certainly had a vision. Uh, and you know, uh, and Liverpool comes to mind. How much of this vision was actually delivered by, by successive Tory governments? Uh, uh, and of course, whatever good Michael Hazard tried to do, Mrs. Thatcher, his boss, undone it. Uh, <laughs> and she destroyed whole communities, but uh, still, especially but in the but north. But so still, let us, some has come let us not forget that you know, Michael Hazard was, a, a, was one of the that biggest critics of, 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 of Mrs. Thatcher. And a lot of this development started before uh, Boris Johnson, the Tory government, came we're in. Gonna, we're going to touch on that again. Let's take the phone call and then we'll come back. Hello, Slaw Alikum, caller. I'm good to you and your panelists. I just want to make a quick uh, comment, please. Yes, Slaalikum. You're on air. Hello. You're on air. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, basically, uh, I can you tell me? Can you tell us your uh, name and you can have. you tell us your name and where you're calling from? Uh, my name is I'm from North London. Okay. And what uh, is? Basically, I'm listening to your panelists. Um, I'm a, I'm a panelist in Leicester. Um, before the lightning will come in, I, I moved from Newham. Okay. So please, um, simple question. You're breaking up. Your your call is breaking up. Okay. And individual tenants, that's who comes in the app from the floor on Saturday night or Friday night, yeah? That's not, that's not the duty. That's not the, I can't, I can't control my tenants, what they're doing this time. So I just think it's a money-making scheme, okay, that they cancel, uh, something, if someone wants to, uh, If you can come to your point, because we're sorry. If you can, if you can tell us your point, because your line is not clear, we can't, we barely hear you. But if no, you can be, just give us your your clear view, and then we'll talk about it. Sorry, say again. Can you just give us your point? What is it you to, you no, want no, us no, to? I just want to say, so by by bringing out the license law that you have, okay, yeah. how does that affect the affect the 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 Thank you, Kula. I think I've got the gist of it, but the line was so uh, disturbing that we can't really properly hear you. Maybe the viewers can uh, hear, uh, yeah. but, uh, hear him, but uh, we didn't able to hear properly. Basically, I, I think I've got the gist of it, mm. that you're, you're charging this license fee, but where is it going? The antisocial behavior is still there, and then the lighting is still undermined, you know, the, the no proper lighting, 
And I think if I'm right, he's saying that the departments are there to take care of those anyway. So why do you need the licensing? And what are you doing with that money? I think we have another call, and then we'll, we'll take the both. Hello, Salaam Alaikum, caller. Yeah, hello. Hello, Alaikum, caller. Uh, uh, my name is actually, I live in, um, I've got a question for uh, Council of Omex SAE. Sure, if I you can speak up. The landlord's licensing scheme is helping uh, find adequate and suitable accommodation in Newham. I've got two properties in Newham. I pay £150 on each of these properties under the mandatory licensing scheme. The council has never been to the property, the property has never been around never visited. So how can Mr. Omesh decide that and say right. the licensing scheme uh, used by the council yeah. for adequate accommodation when they've never okay. been to the property? They okay. took my money and he's never came. No. Okay. I think I think I understood well, I, what he's saying. I, I, I think I just I think your caller is probably a good a good landlord if I may <laughs> say so. Because our officers we actually know. We get uh, evidence from local residents through our, uh, our own experiences. We know who the sure. bad ten, uh, landlords I think, are. I think what uh, is uh, what is what is question is that if people are calling yeah. and letting you know yeah. that has happened before and it will happen anyway. Yeah. So why is your officers because that license should create more officers to go on? Why is that not happening? So firstly, antisocial behaviour is more than the, the private thing. sector licensing sure. scheme. It's about spitti people spitting in the road, yeah. about uh, jobs hang uh, hanging around at street corners, uh, making life a misery for local people. It's about pe uh, uh, what you call uh, d d nuisance, uh, uh, what you call uh, noisy parties at sure. night. A hundred and one forms. Now. The private sector licensing money is not actually for that. It's sure. actually administer the scheme. Okay. It's not a money-making scheme. Unish, we're going to go on a break. Sure. And after we come back, we're going to talk about other stuff. Shri Darshan Pandeli, I'm going to break. 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 I'm